What's going on, everybody? This is Island Hopper TV coming to you from Cairo, Egypt. Let's do it. All right, guys, coming to you from the sixth largest city in the world with a population of over 21 million people, Cairo, Egypt is rich in history and considered the cradle of civilization. Located along the notorious Nile River, it's also the capital of Egypt. We arrived in Cairo from Sharm El Sheikh and spent three days exploring this massive metropolis. We're gonna show you around the Nile River, we're gonna show you the Pyramids of Giza, and do some walking through some of the most incredible street scenes you'll see anywhere in the world. And right here over the Nile, you can see Moses Prophet Island. And they call that Moses Prophet Island because that's where they say Moses was put into the River Nile before he was found by the Pharaoh. And as you can see, we're crossing the River Nile into Giza, which is another district in the Cairo region. So that's where we're headed first. We're going to show you guys around the Pyramids of Giza. And this is where you can find the Great Pyramid of Giza as well as the Sphinx. We're going to take these horses to the Pyramid and the Sphinx now. Right when you arrive there, you'll be asked if you want to ride a horse or take a camel. And they were successfully able to talk me into buying the ride on the horse. All right, we're through. We've got some horses we're going to take a guide with. And stay tuned to watch this whole thing through because we'll let you know how it all went. So we're doing a whole lot of waiting. We went through the ticket counter and now we are actually here just waiting for the horse, but there's a little bit of waiting going on right now. We were there in late summer, so it's hot. It's the Sahara Desert. Waiting around in the heat like that isn't fun. It's highly recommended that when you come here to get a tour or some sort of tour guide before you actually get here. So keep that in mind, whether you prearrange that with your hotel or going on to TripAdvisor, that is highly, highly recommended. I can't stress that enough. And the best way for me to put this is when you get there, you will be approached by many different tour guides who will very adamantly and persistently pursue you to sell you on a tour. And if you already have a tour book that was of your preference, it will save you from a lot of that haggling. And this is actually my first time on a horse. In Petra, it was my first time on a mule. So I'm not really a horse guy, but uh, they did have the horse going pretty quick when he was galloping and I was like, whoa, man, this is wild. But hey, I had to pinch myself. I was at the pyramids of Giza finally. The guide with the horses ended up taking us up on a ridge where we could see the pyramids complex. It's actually three pyramids with the Great Pyramid in the middle and the other two are a little bit smaller. And you can also see there are some smaller pyramids around. This is where they would have tombs. And on the day we were here, it was around 98 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 36, 37 degrees Celsius. And once you actually get to the pyramids, as you get closer, you'll see that there's some debris of the granite that used to go on the outside of the pyramid. I guess what had happened was a long time ago, some tomb raiders came and they, they took the granite. And according to the locals, they don't know who those tomb raiders were who took the granite off the pyramids. As you can see at the top, that's how it used to look like before they stripped the granite off. So they actually let me come up on top of the first two steps here on the Great Pyramid of Giza. And this is only allowed right now because in one year they're going to stop people from being able to come up here actually. And what that local guide was actually telling me was that the Sphinx actually faces east not because that's where it's facing for the sunrise. It's facing towards the Nile River, which is to the east. So it's actually watching the Nile from 
possible invaders. And please don't mind my horseback riding skills here. I was learning to ride a horse for the very first time. All right, so here we are at a tomb. You can see these hieroglyphs up on the wall. Let's go inside. Yeah, if you look on both sides, you can see what appear to be the family members of this person that they entombed. Over here, you have some more inscription. Look how well preserved this is right here. Now bear in mind, these Egyptian pyramids were said to have been built over 2000 years BC. And over here, you can see some color. And if you look right below here, you can see the outline of a giant boat that they found here that's actually at the museum now, but this was the old king's boat. And they would bring all the possessions of the king that they were putting in the tomb as a memorial so that he could have in the afterlife. It wasn't really done as a show of status. Yalla, yalla bina, yalla. Thanks here, a lot of people think he's watching the sunrise, but he's actually looking at the River Nile, protecting the king's tombs here. That's what the Sphinx is really doing. And I'm sure you're curious what Yala means, and that means let's go in Arabic. We spent about four hours exploring the pyramids of Giza. It was getting hot because by the time two o'clock came rolling around, it was spicy out. It was also kind of humid. Just so you know, you can also come here in the evening time and watch a light show, which may be better weather, especially in the hot season from May to October. And as a tourist and a guest in Egypt here at the pyramids of Giza, my main objective is to simply observe. It's not to try to change culture or anything like that because people will say something in the comments about some of the things they may see at the Pyramids of Giza. That's not the type of person I am as a traveler. I go there and I experience as a guest. And I will say I had a great deal of positive interactions with all of the locals in Egypt every time and I get along great with Egyptians and people who work here at the Pyramids of Giza. And after a good time exploring some Egyptian history, now it's time to move on to the next destination. But on the way out, the friendly guide wanted to show me what the Nile River used to look like before they built the dam in Aswan. And we are back in the car with our driver, Ashraf, who is taking us to an outdoor market. And we met Ashraf at our hotel and he took us around all three days actually, which was a great way to see Cairo because we had a private driver who was also a local who could save us from a lot of the haggling. And we're at Khan El Khalili Bazaar. We're gonna walk around here now.
You know, this Connell Khalili market actually started out slow for us, but as we started walking, we got deeper into it and it just got more and more amazing. It's really an electric kind of environment. Lots to see here and it's really a true local uh, place to hang out. So if you do end up visiting Cairo, I do recommend walking around the streets out here, especially in the daytime. So much life and vibrance around here. And soon I will be making a walking tour with just natural sounds of what I experienced here. So you will want to subscribe for that one. Wow, that was an incredible experience. If you haven't gone through an Egyptian bazaar or a walking street like that, I highly recommend it. I mean, it's tons of energy coming at you from all directions. All right, after all that, now we're gonna head over to the Coptic Church out here built into the side of a mountain. This is gonna be interesting. And the sanctuary itself is actually called St. Simon Monastery. This neighborhood we're driving through here is a Coptic Christian community. And here we are at St. Simon Monastery in Tannery. It's actually a church in the mountain. Let's go take a look. 
Simon himself was actually a tanner and a craftsman saint who lived during the 10th century in this cave church. churches like this in the world if you look up right here you can see it's built into the actual mountain it's like a cave that just cascades down the sea you can see the resurrection you can see the gospel on the mount and you can also see the crucifixion right here it's all built into the side of the actual mountain. It is an interesting site and I do recommend to stop here if you have time. And after exploring St. Simon Monastery, now what we're going to do is show you guys around Sunset on the Nile, basically, show you some more sights around Cairo, and then we're actually going to get on a river boat and have a buffet with some belly dancing. So here we are at the City of the Dead. You can see this is a cemetery right here. If you look back in the distance, that's the Solitimo Castle. This is where Richard Lionheart came for the Crusades. Right down here, that's the castle. All right, so we are at the old Egyptian bazaar. Here it is Saturday night. Let's go inside. And you can see the Nile River at night here. Look at all those boats out there. All right, so we're gonna go on Lay Memphis here. It's a Nile River night cruise. So now you can get ready to watch some belly dancing 
and other entertainers actually with lots of loud music. This was actually a great experience and a good way to spend the evening. It's not dry, which means they do have shots of whatever kind of alcohol you could possibly want. So that's okay here, right on the Nile. But I would say the buffet was good. The experience overall was really awesome. I laughed a lot and had some fun. Talked to a lot of people while there also. Hello, welcome to Egypt. Any sign to come in Egypt here in Cairo? At your service. I am the driver, Ashraf Adam, with Mr. Jeff. <laughs>